Hey, this is Raul for Bass Musician Magazine, and we are in sunny Ridgefield, Washington, a lovely summer day, and I have the great pleasure and honor of sitting here with Dan Rothschild, the bassist for Heart. They're on tour. So, starting from the beginning, Dan is who I would describe as an international man of mystery in that there's not as much information about him that is readily available, but as so many bassists do, they are the heartbeat of the music. They're the ones that are constantly there keeping the tunes going. And a lot of times you don't know who they are. So we need to get to know, I need to get to know Dan as much as you're going to get to know Dan. So Dan, tell us about yourself. <laughs> well, I'm a kid from New Jersey who uh, grew up listening to the radio and loving it. And uh, my dad got me a bass when I was 13, my first electric. Mm -hmm. And I just started playing along to the radio and uh, learning from there and records that I had. My dad got me a little mixer where I could blend in my sound with it and um, uh, just sort of learned off the radio and I would flip the dial. I had one of those big old you know radios in the 70s where when you flip the dial it actually spins for a while <laughs> and then the di and then it lands somewhere. I remember that. And those. wherever yeah. it would land I would try to play what, what you know I'd tune it to where it was near and Mm -hmm. uh, just try to play along to whatever it was and that was my ear training gotcha yeah and and so did you start with a neighborhood band like a, a lot of players yeah do, yeah yeah kids in my in my high school you know we made a garage band and mm -hmm. just did covers things like that and uh, had a blast and we never played out you know we just played for fun mm -hmm. on the weekends and stuff and that's how it started but my first uh, my first experience live was at uh, an amazing uh, summer camp in Maine called Meadowlark, uh, run by this great, great uh, camp director named Neil Goldberg, who uh, brought in this incredible band to play for one of our uh, dances. And uh, the band had heard that I was I was a bass player, and I had never played a show at that point. And they kind of like forced me up on stage. I'm like, no, I I couldn't. You know, I'm not ready. And they forced me up on stage, and and uh, we played some song. I don't even remember. It might have been even. A, it's a disco song of some type, but I can't remember it was all such a blur, but it went so well and I had a blast doing it and I got hooked on the live uh, experience at that point and, you know, uh, and uh, my friends were all so, so supportive at that camp that it just, it was a great uh, moment for me where I, it was like an aha moment of, mm -hmm. oh, I really think I could do this. So you get a start. Yeah. Um, and, and from there, since you had kind of the hook, how did you go about continuing your growth as a musician? What did you, what did you do? Um, just the natural thing everyone does, just, you know, get in a bunch of bands okay. and uh, write originals, you know, goof around with your friends, play uh, gigs. I, uh, I sort of ended up uh, pretty quick in a band that um, was playing uh, five nights a week, four sets a night, and do about 75% uh, covers and 25% originals. And, you know, just that kind of work ethic really it got my chops to where they can get to mine aren't that great really and i'm not really a technical guy more of a glue guy mm -hmm. and uh, well you know there's a basic when we talk about bassists there i tend to kind of almost think of a pyramid where you've yeah. got at the bottom a foundation yeah. of the Drums. ones that are doing the the yeah. they're doing the groove they're yeah. keep you know they're doing the low end yeah. uh, they're not your out there virtuoso next level Kind, yeah. of, kind of people, and yeah. you know, and, and you, it takes all kinds. And then you've got individuals that transcend above kind of the rest. They're more at the, at the top, but they're, they kind of live in a whole other mm -hmm. realm. And those are the ones that when you run into them, you're like, oh, I'm not worthy. Yeah. I'm not worthy because yeah. they come up with stuff and you're going, oh, you know, this, yeah. you're, just, you're just blowing me away here. Yeah. But for the majority of music, the, you know, there's the guys that are getting the job done and I think that's where the majority of players live and the majority of players identify uh -huh. with that particular group of people, you know, and going, hey, that's, this is one of my guys, you mm -hmm. know, because with some of the uh, more top of the top, they, they seem so unreachable with what you could possibly do that it's almost discouraging that you'd go, uh -huh. well, gee, you know, I don't know yeah. if I'll ever, you know, kind of be doing that, but, yeah. you know. I grew, up, I grew up loving pop, so I really didn't have a didn't want to strive for things like the Return to Forever or mm -hmm. something extremely technical. I tried for years to get my uh, my finger speed up, but for some reason I just have something with my muscles 
that they don't move too fast too long. So gotcha. uh, I just sort of gravitated more towards the foundational stuff and uh, the music that just felt good to my heart. That wasn't, you know, from the head, more from the heart. Gotcha. You know, and the pelvis and all that. Just stuff that moves, it ends up moving people more in the long run, mm -hmm. you know? Music for people, not just for musicians. Gotcha. So that's the kind of music I love. And, and I think that that's a, that's a really good point because I think, especially with jazz, and again, I, I stir up people when it comes, we start talking about jazz because back in the day, jazz was for people. We start thinking like cotton club time yeah, yeah. and it was non-written music. It was the musicians, you know, they just, they played by ear. They knew the tunes. Yeah. Uh, folks could dance to it. They enjoyed it. And then it morphed into a kind of jazz that unless you're another musician, you're kind of going, what's what's with this and yeah. I get CDs we get CDs for review often where I, I'm thinking are these people um, you know Victor Wooten once said that no matter what note you hit you're only half a note away from the right one yeah so yeah. I'm, I'm kind of wondering are they just going along well well I'm at least half a note away from the yeah. right ones because it's discordant it's half it's, knowledge and it's half just taking a risk you yeah. know yeah and you've got to take that it's risk it's scattered but yeah. it elicits and yeah. I think at least in myself kind of an adverse reaction as I'm listening to it I don't feel happy I don't feel right. good about it uh -huh. and I find myself you know reaching over to hit next track let's 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 get something else here because yeah. this is this is just crazy so as, as we move along you played with a, a ton of, of huge names in music um, you know you've, you've been you're busy busy guy mm -hmm. you know thankfully and, well, that's busy yeah. is good. Yeah, I know. Busy is, is, is very good. And I know that you enjoy also producing and, yeah. and, and some of the, the, the studio work as I, I looked at the very, very brief bit of information on your yeah. website. Which isn't even updated with the most recent bit of information. Tell us a little bit about, you know, what you've been with Hart for like the last four years. Yeah, just a little over four years. Okay. And uh, um, I got an audition call from... Uh, I was recommended by a friend who uh, had I had done sessions with a drummer, great drummer named Travis McNabb, who recommended me to the old tour manager from Heart, who was trying to source trusted uh, suggestions for an audition. And they called five guys, and I was one of them. Somebody else in the organization had heard about me as well, so they're, oh yeah, let's get that guy. And I didn't know anyone outside of that. And I got a call. Would you be interested in auditioning for Heart? I, yes. Are you kidding me? I grew up on Heart. You know, yeah. at that very same summer camp I was talking about, I would be playing along with uh, Heart tapes, like my cassettes. Mm -hmm. You know, and Little Queen. And, you know. <laughs> for those of you that don't remember, cassettes were those little square things we used to, used to put in the machine, and they played. So okay. And you take a pencil. Never yeah. mind. <laughs> you had to tighten them up <laughs> if, because yeah. the machine would eat them. Yeah. You know, you're like, oh no. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so um, I got that call and um, went in an audition. And it was it was amazing walking into the audition because uh, you know I was wanted to be polite and I was keeping my level kind of quiet on stage. And Ann goes, Ann turns around after the first song goes, Hey, I can't hear you. Turn that thing up. And so I was like, Oh, this is going to be great. Nice. She likes bass, so yeah, I turned up. Had a, that was like a very relaxing moment. It was a very it was a relief of a moment and. Mm -hmm. uh, and I uh, just started having a great time at that point, and that's when it really started working. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm. And um, so four years of fun from then on. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's just a blast. Fabulous. And I know that people are probably a little curious, uh, and it may be in frame in front of us. You're holding your a Bonneville. Nope. Base. This is not the Bonneville. No, this is my P base. This is your P base. This is the one I've had since 1980. It's a 75. Uh, actually, the the. Next, next says 72 and the body says 70. The serial number is a 75. Frank and so, base? No, I don't know. They maybe had the next sitting around a long time in the in the factory and then they put it together and sent gotcha. it out, you know, probably. But uh, when I got this thing, it didn't have a scratch on it. Wow. And uh, so 36 years later and it's worn through to the wood. I don't know what that's doing on there. <laughs> worn through directly to the wood there uh -huh. uh, and here too, completely through to the wood and and um, it has been, it's been through a bunch of stuff. It's been some, through some ele active electronics with uh, piezo pickups down here and a blend knob and everything and all kinds of, uh, you know, uh, overcomplicated stuff inside. Mm -hmm. And eventually I just ripped that all out and uh, including the tone and volume knobs. And now there's just an on off switch. Um, and a very convenient bottle opener. Yeah, the bottle opener was born of necessity. <laughs> that was from... Uh, 
that was uh, I was playing in that same uh, I was telling you about playing in clubs when I was 18 and mm -hmm. stuff and um, I would always you know I had a waitress who was on my side and she would sneak me beers and put them behind my SVT amp at the time and uh, I would uh, open them with whatever I could you know find around like a water bottle or mm -hmm. things like that and eventually I saw this sitting in a hardware store I was working at and I thought, oh yeah well I'll just grab that and throw that on there and it was a lot easier to just right behind the amp kind of sneak a quick open of the bottle of Guinness. Yep. Gotcha. Well, and for people that want to see this a little more closely, it is the it is the image on Dan's website as well. So you'll see the body of, of this classic Fender. Now, getting back to my mistake, the Bonneville is your other bass. Yeah, the Bonneville is made by Linz, uh, Roland Linz McKay, and it's the first bass he ever made, but he's an amazing guitar maker, mm -hmm. and he made... Uh, yeah, I wish we had it with us, but uh, it's a gorgeous jazz style bass. And I had never had a jazz bass, so when I heard, he told me he was making a bass and it was a jazz, and I was very excited. And uh, then he brought it in, and it's incredible. So, nice. it, and he's made a bunch of guitars, uh, but his first bass, he knocked it out of the park. And nice. uh, that's not a baseball pun on purpose. <laughs> that just happened. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so I use that on, the, on some softer stuff like These Dreams or Dog and Butterfly when we play things like that. It's got a wonderful tone. And even sometimes the Zeppelin stuff because John Paul Jones used nice. to jazz a lot. Nice. Yeah. Now, with, with most tours, I know they use like direct input, are you, but are you using amps or...? I have three, I have three signals. I have a DI. Mm -hmm. uh, I also have... Uh, I used to run like a distortion pedal, but, you know, inspired by Tom Peterson, from Cheap Trick, who yeah. we are so lucky to be able to tour, uh, be touring with, mm -hmm. uh, I um, I split out my amp into two signals, two different amps. I have my main Aguilar rig, which is just incredible, warm and fat and natural sounding, gotcha. uh, for just the the low end and the and the meat. And then I have an orange rig, um, the uh, oh god, what's the name of that thing? The little one, you know, the little one, the fifteen seven fifteen watt switchable one. Exactly. It's okay. a t it is the Tiny Terror. Gotcha. Yeah, and that and a 212 cabinet, and the, and I use that uh, to feather in distortion, and I have that on a volume pedal, so I just fade in as much as I want on nice. and uh, can adjust for... Sometimes it's all the way up, sometimes it's just a little for articulation, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, that's just been a, a real eye-opening improvement in the sound because it's more expressive because the tubes are breathing more like... Uh, you know, like reality, not like a distortion pedal will do for you. Absolutely. So yeah, I'm really happy with the current rig. So and, and the, our front of house guy blends all three of those together. How about flat wound or, or round wounds? Oh, um, well, almost always rounds for live, but I use mm -hmm. flats in the studio a lot. You know, I'll bring a couple flat wound bases to gotcha. the studio for the artist or, you know, I've been on tours where I've had, they've wanted flats uh, live, but I just kind of control the tone with my fingers. Part of the, part of the thing of tearing out the volume and tone mm -hmm. controls is, you know, it opens up the sound. There's so much more frequency response and, uh, and just headroom. But um, you have to learn how to, how to do volume and tone and, you know, all that kind of stuff with your fingers. Sure. So um, I can kind of fake sort of a flat wound sound with a palm mute, mm -hmm. things like that. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, we had just been talking with uh, John Cohen with the Doobie Brothers, and mm -hmm. he had mentioned that he was using flat wound because of the sound that they're trying to get with their music. Yeah. And so it was yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of specific that way. Yeah. When I was great. out when I was out with Beck, I had a flat wound bass. Yeah. You know, all the time. Nice. You know? Yeah. My main was flat wound. Yeah. And that was an amazing tour. Very cool. As well. Very cool. Yeah. And since the things are going, you're busy. Things are going strong. What are you looking at? What's what's in the future? What are, what are, what are you what are your your aspirations and projects that you'd like to work on? Well, I still just I love getting in the studio and working with new artists or working with established artists or just different artists. Just keep the variety coming. I love it, you know. You. So yeah, everybody, I'm on the road, but I'm not on the road all the time. Only about <laughs> half the time, so I'm still alive. So call me and let's do a session. There you go. So for those of you that are watching, this is how you generate. Connections and business, you yeah. know, seize the opportunity, let people know you're available. You yeah, know? I've never had a business card, but, but you know, I do let people know, yeah, I'll do a session if you want. You and, uh, of course, I love touring with Hark, so I'm going to stay out with them as long as they'll have me. And it's so fun, but I'm available in the gaps for sessions. And uh, um, I also love producing, and um, I'd love to work on some more, you know, great albums. I had the distinct pleasure of getting to uh, co-produce the latest Heart record with Nancy. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, which kind of came about organically. We did a song together, uh, 
uh, back in October, uh, just a single song, and that went so well, she and I working together, that uh, uh, when we were going to do the entire album, mm -hmm. we just sort of started up in that mode again, and unofficially, and I didn't get named uh, producer, which turned into co-producer, till, till the middle of the project. Wow. And, uh, but we just had such a blast working together. We were always on the same page, always had the same thoughts. And uh, so she, um, she put it in my court, sometimes went home early in the day and nice. would lead me to uh, edit and um, mix and stuff. And, and the, the team we worked with that we had was ideal. Ken Sluter and Billy Mims, mm -hmm. incredible engineers. And we all just worked so well together. It was, it was a dream project. Uh, got to work at Sunset Sound where my dad would work all the time and so it was very um, meaningful for me to go there every day, uh, drive down from my father's house who has passed away, take the same route, go to the studio, work in the same room and, um, and he was a, a great producer uh, whose shoes I will never fill but um, uh, it was a blast to be able to sort of try on a real budget and a real album at a real studio with an amazing band and incredible singers incredible artists so that was a blast well and my biggest a, break so far as a father myself i'm sure that your efforts would make your father proud i would you hope know, so yeah continue yeah. to aspire yeah. that's you know that's that's, that's yeah. a great it's a great achievement yeah um and do you have because you you have lined up things so well what advice would you have for upcoming musicians if they were to look to want to do something like this? And I'll, I'll, I'll mention that a lot of times touring as much as, as elegant as it may seem to a lot of people on the other side of the stage where you see all the bright lights and yeah. it all seems great. It's it's hard, and you yeah. spend a lot of time sitting in traffic, or you yeah, know, or or, you're, or you spend a lot of time like. Uh, in a rainstorm by the side of a muddy road, <laughs> taking your suitcase out of the bus, trying to like go through and get your laundry switched over, wow. and uh, you know, and cars yeah. are passing by, and you know, it's it's a carnival life, you know. But I love it. I'm fine with it. I adapt very well to it. I'm, I can sleep in a bunk, no problem. Oh, and nice. So, I enjoy the daily change. I enjoy, you know. So for somebody that so, is is having a realistic expectation yeah. of a tour life, what would you recommend? How, well, how the most you... important uh, qualification for being a touring touring musician outside of knowing how to play your instrument is integrating with other humans you know gotcha. really really uh being a team player uh contributing to the village you know and uh doing your part to help out and stay out of the way when needed so a lot of it is just sort of emotional dynamic and gotcha. yeah that's something i'm trying to learn you know over well, the years and it sounds like the dynamics with heart are excellent because They're excellent. You've, you've, you're so energized yeah. being with them. So it's, yeah. it, it makes it kind of less than a, than a task. It no. makes it more of a joy. It is a complete joy every night playing with them. It's uh, They're very supportive and uh, uh, they're very, you know, they endorse p individuals' creativity. Mm -hmm. So we vary stuff around every night. Nancy varies her guitar parts, keeps it interesting. Nice. They hate for it to get samey. Anne will do different vocals every night and I'll be like, I'll hear something every night that'll be like, I have never heard her do that before and it just blew me away and uh, so that's inspiring and they don't they enjoy when we vary stuff around too uh, Ben and Craig and Chris and I all change parts every night to keep it interesting while centered around the core of what the song should be and the great thing about Ann and Nance is they just chose us for our instincts and then sort of let us run very occasionally there'll be a thing they'll say like oh let's let's try this in a more um, Let's try this song in a more soul style right now. But there's never play this note or do this or so we're we're all having a blast out here yeah. being ourselves. It, it reminds me of a kind of a, a the famous story is a bassist was trying to impress a new band and got out there and just cut loose with all, all the licks and all the stuff he could. Yeah. And the band leader came back to him and says, uh, you know that stuff you were doing? He said, don't do any of that. Yeah. <laughs> cut it out. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's, it's great that you've got creative license and, yeah. and that, that is just amazing. Yeah, you, you have to know when to nail it down and hit the, uh, you know, hit the milestone markers and hit the foundation stuff. Totally. But there's also places where you can, you can weave around and, and my job is always to anchor the to link the drums to the vocal mm -hmm. you know to make those two things work together so I'm less active while there's vocal occurring and maybe there'll be a little fill while there's no vocal sure. things like that and uh, just sort of um, 
trying to weave those two elements together, which is eternally fun. Great. Yeah. Well, Dan, we are very grateful that you've taken time out of your busy schedule because this it's always amazing on tour how it all comes together uh, in hours and it's all ready and yeah. then it all gets torn down and you're somewhere else tomorrow, yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah. it's amazing. So we're very grateful. Um, Dan Rothschild, Heart on Tour. See him, yell his name if you're in the audience. He'll know that you saw this interview at least. <laughs> and you've seen this here coming to you from less than sunny now. It's changed, weather's changed. That's the way Washington State is. Weather will change if you just wait a few moments. But Bass Musician Magazine, bring it to you live, heart. <laughs>